Hi, it's Sunday night, the 19th of April, and day 110 of Living the Dream, as I pursue my journey to alignment of all three minds. Last night, I wrote down the following for my power statement. I want to get started on recording lesson 10 and also going through the stack of thoughts I have written down on all these things that I want to get done before I launch my coaching business, end quote. I have to admit that I was pretty tired and kind of lost track of the fact that it's Sunday um, today, which is the day I chose to sharpen the saw. Now I will say this, that I did go through part of the stack of papers containing all of those thoughts I wrote about, and I put several of them into priority and ordered them, and, and I'm going to get them done. So anyhow, take a look at this. That's my to-do list for today. I have one yellow one. I had uh, eight total of doodle little details, and that list was on the top. Bam! Done! That's my to-do list. I also want to show you this. <laughs> I'll take this paper clip off. There is lesson 10. There's a lesson 11. And there's lesson 12. Just three more lessons that I got to get done. And then here, as you can see, the stack. I just see how thick it is here. I, I wrote down uh, all these right here. I'm going to either put lessons, coaching, worksheets in a file on my Google Drive. I'm, I've got two specific files there, the uh, podcast files and my lesson files. I'm going to put another one called worksheets. I'm going to upload and make them all a little nice and then upload them there so they're all there. One, two, three, lesson, da-da-da, lesson, da-da-da, lesson, da-da-da. We type up the newly arranged podcast list. We type up the book list. Type up a new insights interviews list. I've handwritten several business owners. I know I've got them there. I want to type it up and then just keep adding to it. Anyhow, I did a lot of these here and got them all organized, ready to do. So that's great. Now, I also want to say that uh, I had um, highlighted that one task for today, but all the other tasks were related to a couple of webinar meetings that I had where I discussed some of the things that we're doing to support the folks at Avalon Care Center. I talked about my folks who are helping with that, and, and bless their hearts, these sweet people are stuck in their rooms for nearly two months now. They can't even wander the halls together or go into each other's rooms because they got to protect each other. And so I spent the day relaxing with Kathleen after that, but I wanted to sharpen my saw and also give some good time to thinking about how we're going to improve upon our connectivity with those dear people. So bam, done, got that done. Croy asks, get honest with yourself, Marty. What didn't go well today? What could you have done better? Did you wake up early and start strong for a Sunday? I did. I think it was like 6, 10, boop, my eyes woke up. So I got up. And did you start your morning with power? Did my win the morning, win the day routine? Check, check, check. Were you productive throughout the day? I did. I'll get to that in just a minute. Yes, I was. Did you get the most important things done? I just went through that. Absolutely. Did you move your goals forward? I did. Did you show up as the person you wanted to? In other words, were you present with Kathleen? We had the whole day together. It was lovely. It was wonderful. Now combine all these questions and answer this. Were you honest with yourself about today's task? In other words, did you keep your commitments you made to yourself today? Although today was pretty much a day of relaxation and meetings and time with Kathleen, it went really fast. I couldn't believe how fast the day went. And I was right up here ready to do the journal tonight, not right now. Wow, it's just zoom. The day was fast. Anyway, the next thing Croy asked was this. What's the one thing out of all the things you did today, Marty, that you know you can improve on going forward. In other words, was there a, a, a failure that you could turn into a, a tool of success? Well, I actually did uh, a lot today. I got up at, like I said, about a little after six this morning. I did my win the morning, win the day routine with Kathleen, including my exercises. Check, check, check. I fixed and ate breakfast for myself. I had a call at eight o'clock, like I said, that lasted about an hour, and then I listened to a beautiful musical program with Kathleen. It was so lovely. I came downstairs to sort through those papers um, and prioritize and write some of those things down on that list I just showed you. I did a little reading as well and then came uh, into the living room and sat down and relaxed with Kathleen. Then we had lunch, a little simple lunch together. And then I took um, an opportunity to her and I to study for about an hour, hour and a half together. And then we talked and planned for this coming week. We talked about our past week and that kind of thing. So Kathleen wanted to then practice her heart. And I took advantage of the afternoon after that as she was practicing on her heart. I sat on my recliner, I put it into uh, recline and 
I slept for a couple hours. It was fantastic. And then shortly it was time for early dinner at 5 o'clock. So about 5, 5, 15, we sat down and had a wonderful dinner. And then I spent the evening with Kathleen. We uh, relaxed and talked more. And we had a wonderful time watching a really, really fun movie together. And then came and finished the day and went up to bed. I came up here. The next question is, what was the your biggest success you had today? Well, my biggest success today was simply showing... Um, I mean, slowing down and relaxing. The next question was um, that Croy asked is, what's the one thing you did that made you feel successful today? Or did you feel successful? I felt great about getting some reading and studying with Kathleen done and having a great conversation. It certainly was a great afternoon together, connecting as we plan for our next week and all the upcoming events. So that was a wonderful day. The next question is, what movies did you watch in your mind today, Marty? Did you make time for them? Although I spent a little time during my mindfulness time this morning watching my favorite five movies. Some of them are shorter now. The little movie trailer, zoom, zoom, zoom. It's so fun. I love spending some time pre-playing on the screen of my mind nine months from now. I spent a little time doing it. Going nine months ahead, doing my 365th video journal entry. The last day of the year of 2020 and the last monthly overview like I've done the last three months now so far except I not only did the overview for December I also did an um, overview for the entire year boy did I let my imagination go wild there for a few minutes it was one of those clips like the one I had once before as I was preparing for a football game I think it was my senior year I was in the locker room and you get the lights all out and you're preparing to go hit some heads and that kind of thing. But as I sat there, I imagined myself, I flew 25 yards and 15 feet in the air and ended up diving over and tackling the quarterback for a huge loss, causing him to funnel. I picked up the ball and I ran it into the end zone for a touchdown. Realistic? Not so much. Yeah, I know that's pretty crazy. If you think that was crazy though, you should have been in my head and see how crazy a story was on my screen in my mind as I was telling about that last uh, day of the year and my whole year. It was wild. Anyway, I had a great time thinking about it and breaking away from reality a little bit there. It was just so fun while it lasted and then I woke up to reality. Anyhow, Corey asked me, rate your day for the days and so I gave today an eight. And that's because I sharpened <laughs> I sharpened the saw at the speed of nine. Excuse me, at the speed of eight today. He just kidding, of course, but I do feel I put forth a good effort to have a great day today of living the dream. And I did. I had a great day. And the next question is, if this was the only thing you get done tomorrow, but you'd still feel like a success, what would that one thing be? And now put it into a power statement. I do that every night. And so here's what I wrote down. I want to start recording Lesson 10 and do some of the tasks I put on that list I talked about and showed you earlier so I can feel like I'm getting more than just a lesson done here and there. I want to get a lot done each day. Like I said, some of the ideas that uh, my two amigos have brought back to me, I've written them down and I want to get some of them da done as soon as possible while they're fresh on my mind. So that's why I said I will get started on recording Lesson 10. I'm going to have some other time to do some of these other tasks. Okay, let's end the day strong. Here's what I'm grateful for for today. First of all, I'm grateful for this little clip right here. Let me show you this. I don't know if you can see that. The little thing that I use uh, as a reminder that I need to get, for example, it has that little stamp, get stamps. I do write, I mean, I can hold up a whole card, a note, and whatever. I, I do write down the task on my to-dos, but it's nice to see it in front of my face, or right here every time I said, it's all right there reminding me that I gotta get that done before the day runs out. I can't tell you how many times it saved my bacon. So I'm grateful for that little thing. Next, I'm grateful for the law of loyalty. The sunflower has been called the symbol of loyalty. A story is told of a ship that had been torpedoed at sea, and the crew deserted the ship for the lifeboats. Only two persons remained, the commanding officer, who had been blinded by the explosion, and his personal attendant, who had served him faithfully for many years. The captain, true to the tradition of the sea, had decided to go down with the ship, dressed in his smartest uniform and with all the flags flying. The faithful servant had stood silently at the side of his blind master without making his presence known until all the lifeboats were filled and out to sea. As the water gradually rose to their knees and then to their waists, the captain urged his aid to save himself. The servant told his now blinded master the story of the sunflower, the symbol of loyalty. 
The sunflower follows the sun, he said, not only in the early hours when the day is young, but also at the day's zenith when the heat is the most intense. The sunflower looks directly into the sun in the morning is at the sun de- as the sun declines, follows it until it finally disappears into the horizon. The servant concluded, that is loyalty. Then, just before the ship reared up on its end to plunge into this watery grave, these two occupants it, to the bottom of the sea, taking it with him, the servant added, the sunflower follows the sun. You go down with your ship, and I go down with you. Super people usually are people with super loyalties. Loyalty is the spirit of Nathan Hale, who at the age of just 21, imagine that, at the age of 21 said, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. As a consequence of his loyalty, he lives forever in the hearts of his countrymen. Job said of God, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The real point of loyalty is the effect it has upon us. When these kinds of super loyalties are applied toward one's company, his or her family, his or her church, or even to himself or herself, he or she is marked for leadership and top honors, whereas a menial is a person who is disloyal to him or to her work. The lie of loyalty says that we must think loyalty and then put it into action. Love that principle of loyalty. I taught my children growing up that they needed to be loyal to each other. We're Bradens. We need to love each other. We need to forgive each other. We need to be loyal on the playground and not take take the side of a bully uh, that's hurting your little brother. You stand tall and say, that's my little brother, that kind of thing. So lastly, I'm grateful for the principle of success that says a successful life is nothing more than a lot of successful days put together. It is going to take so many days to reach your goal If this goal is to be reached in a minimum amount of time, every day must count. That was said by Earl Nightingale. Okay, it's time to shut this down. Today certainly was another great day of living the dream. And so I'll be right back here at this same place to do one more time. Again, another video entry right here at this computer. I'm going to do those journal day for day for day for an entire year. I wish you continued success. Good night.